Hello and welcome. The Setting Apart podcast is a pit stop where you can get nourished, encouraged, and refreshed whenever you need a break. I am your host, IP, and every episode I get to share my stories, my outlook, my reflections on all things inspired through the lens of faith. So grab yourself a coffee, sit back, relax, and chill. If you have been reading the book of Tobit along with me, the story is getting fascinating and interesting, isn't it? In Tobit chapter 5, while we, the readers, know that Raphael is an angel, Tobit and his family have no clue, since it has not been revealed to them yet. So, the question becomes, what are angels? What is the purpose of their existence? And what are their roles in our salvation history and in our lives? Angels play a critical role in scripture and in our salvation history. In fact, angels are a dogma of Catholic faith. You cannot be a Catholic if you do not believe in the existence of angels. Tobit is the only time in scripture that we meet the archangel Raphael, whose name means God heals. It is the only time we get to see an angel up close and personal in the Bible. So I can't wait to dive right in. Before we do so, let's have a quick recap of Tobit chapter 4. In episode 5, Have Eyes and Not See, we see that Tobit is passing down the way of God to his son, Tobiah, despite having lost his sight. Prior to that, we read that Tobit never failed to perform all kinds of corporal works of mercy to his fellow kinsmen against the backdrop of being forced into idolatry while in exile. In other words, despite Tobit's righteousness, which truly sets him apart from the rest, he himself suffers the death of darkness when he loses his sight. Yet, his faith in the Lord remains steadfast, handing down the faith and the tradition to his son Tobiah, urging him to continue keeping the commandments as revealed by Yahweh. And this I find um, quite remarkable, particularly while he is physically blind, yet Tobit's vision through the lens of faith is better than most, if not all, who is not blind. Now, Scripture tells us that Tobit's eyes are precisely the eyes that Jesus wants us to have. The eyes of understanding and perception, the lens of faith. And so today, it is good for us to constantly reflect on whether we have eyes and not see, or whether we have ears and not hear. With that, we continue our quest with Tobiah, the son of Tobit, in episode 6, Tobit chapter 5. Let us quiet down as we invoke the help of the Holy Spirit in guiding us to not see without seeing and not hear without hearing. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to gather in your name, to listen attentively to you. As your word unfolds, it gives light, even the simple understand. We pray that the Holy Spirit in our midst could guide us in opening our eyes, our ears, and our heart to be enlightened by your word. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tobit chapter 5 Then Tobiah replied to his father Tobit, Everything you have commanded me, Father, I shall do. But how will I be able to get that money from him, since he does not know me, and I do not know him? What sign can I give him so that he will recognize and trust me and give me the money? I do not even know the roads to media in order to go there. 
Tobit and to his son, Tobiah. He gave me his bond, and I gave him mine. I divided his into two parts, and each of us took one part. I put one part with the money. It is twenty years since I deposited that money. So, son, find yourself a trustworthy person who will make the journey with you, and we will give him wages when you return. But bring back that money from Gabael while I'm still alive. Tobiah went out to look for someone who would travel with him to Media, someone who knew the way. He went out and found the angel, Raphael, standing before him, though he did not know that this was an angel of God. Tobiah said to him, Where do you come from, young man? He replied, I am an Israelite, one of your kindred. I have come here to work. Tobiah said to him, Do you know the way to Media? Yes, he replied. I have been there many times. I know the place well, and am acquainted with all the routes. I have often traveled to Media. I used to stay with our kinsman Gabriel, who lives in Rogers in Media. It is a good two days' journey from Agbatana to Rogers, for Rogers is situated in the mountains, but Agbatana is in the middle of the plain. Tobiah said to him, Wait for me, young man, till I go in and tell my father, for I need you to make the journey with me. I will pay you your wages. He replied, Very well, I will wait, but do not be long. Tobiah went in and informed his father Tobit, I have found someone of our own Israelite kindred who will go with me. Tobit said, Call the man in, so that I may find out from what family and tribe he comes, and whether he is trustworthy enough to travel with you, son. Tobiah went out to summon him, saying, Young man, my father is calling you. When Raphael entered the house, Tobit greeted him first. He replied, Joyful greetings to you, Tobit answered. What joy is left for me? Here I am, a blind man who cannot see the light of heaven, but must remain in darkness, like the dead who no longer see the light. Though alive, I am among the dead. I can hear people's voices, but I do not see them. The young man said, Take courage. God's healing is near. So, take courage. Tobit then said, My son, Tobiah, wants to go to Media. Can you go with him to show him the way? I will pay you your wages, brother. He answered, Yes, I will go with him, and I know all the routes. I have often traveled to Media and crossed all its plains, so I know well the mountains and all its roads. Tobit asked him, Brother, tell me, please, from what family and tribe are you? He replied, Why? What need do you have for a tribe? Aren't you looking for a hired man? Tobit replied, I only want to know, brother, whose son you truly are and what your name is. He answered, I am Azariah, son of the great Hananiah, one of your own kindred. Tobit exclaimed, Welcome, God save you, brother. Do not be provoked with me, brother, for wanting to learn the truth about your family. It turns out that you are a kinsman from a noble and good line. I knew Hananiah and Nathan, the two sons of the great Shemaliah. They used to go to Jerusalem with me, where we would worship together. They were not led astray. Your kindred are good people. You are certainly of good lineage, so welcome. Then he added, For each day I will give you a drachma as wages, as well as expenses for you and for my son. So go with my son, and I will even add a bonus to your wages. The young man replied, I will go with him. Do not fear. 
In good health, we will leave you, and in good health, we will return to you, for the way is safe. Tobit said, Blessing be upon you, brother. Then he called his son and said to him, Son, prepare whatever you need for the journey and set up with your kinsmen. May God in heaven protect you on the way and bring you back to me safe and sound. May his angel accompany you for your safety, son. Tobiah left to set out on his journey, and he kissed his father and mother. Tobit said to him, Have a safe journey. But his mother began to weep, and he said to Tobit, Why have you sent my child away? Is he not the staff of our hands as he goes in and out before us? Do not heap money upon money. Rather, relinquish it in exchange for our child. What the Lord has given us to live on is certainly enough for us. Tobit reassured her. Do not worry. Our son will leave in good health and come back to us in good health. Your own eyes will see the day when he returns to you safe and sound. So do not worry, do not fear for them, my sister. For a good angel will go with him. His journey will be successful, and he will return in good health. Then she stopped weeping. All right, and so that was chapter 5. It is another instructive chapter in the book of Tobit packed with so much good stuff. Since I know so little about angels, I want to start unpacking that first. To do so, I refer to the Catechism of the Catholic Church or the CCC, and I'll be reading from the paragraph 328 to 336. Now, as a side note, if you are reading the Bible on your own, firstly, good on you. You must be drawn by the Holy Spirit because I do not know anyone who would just randomly pick up the Bible and read. Certainly not me. So good on you. Now, secondly, when you're reading the Bible on your own, I would highly recommend um, the CCC to go along with your reading. Just hear me out. The commentary there comes mainly from Scripture. In other words, it is biblical. And it also comes from the church fathers and the doctors of the church, etc. In other words, from tradition. So seriously, regardless of your Christian denomination, you have got to have the CCC with you. That's my pro tip for you, by the way. Okay, so let's get going. What are angels? Well, according to um, the CCC, paragraph 328, angels are spiritual, non-corporeal beings as described in sacred scripture and by tradition. Non-corporeal means that they don't have a physical body. So unlike human beings, angels are spiritual beings without a body. In his treatise on angels from the Summa Theologica, in the hierarchy of creation, St. Thomas Aquinas affirms that animals are wholly corporeal, humans are composite, that is both corporeal and spiritual. So logically, they must be also a purely spiritual creatures, and they are the angels. St. Thomas also says that angelic minds are higher than human minds. Now, from the paragraph 329, I'd like to draw your attention to the CCC again, paragraph 329. This is what the church has got to say, and I quote, So with their whole beings, the angels are servants and messengers of God. From the next paragraph onwards, it reads as follows. As purely spiritual creatures, angels have intelligence and will. They are personal and immortal creatures, surpassing in perfection all visible creatures, as the splendor of their glory bears witness. So angels are spiritual beings created by God to help him, right? And like human beings, they have intelligence and free will, but in a higher order than us. They are, however, immortal creatures that do not have a physical body. So from scripture, we can see that they can appear in human form and interact with us. 
But those bodies are only temporary illusions, and they pass away when the interaction ends. So the question then becomes, what purpose do angels serve? To understand their purpose, it helps to understand how they relate to Jesus Christ. For that, I turn to CCC, paragraph number 331 or 331, which reads as follows. Christ is the center of the angelic world. They are his angels. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, and that's from Matthew 25, they belong to him because they were created through and for him. For in him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or authorities. All things were created through and for him. And that is from the Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. They belong to him still more because Jesus has made them messengers of his saving plan. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to serve for the sake of those who are to obtain salvation? That was from Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. And so, from Scripture, we can see that angels are created through and for Christ, and one of their roles is to minister and to serve all those who are to inherit the gift of salvation. Next, I'm going to move on to the next paragraph, which is paragraph 332, and it reads as follows. Angels have been present since creation and throughout the history of salvation, announcing this salvation from afar or near, and serving the accomplishment of the divine plan. They closed the earthly paradise, protected Lot, saved Hagar and a child, stayed Abraham's hand, communicated the law by the ministry, led the people of God, announced births and callings, and assisted the prophets, just to cite a few examples. We can find that in Job, Genesis, Acts of the Apostle, Exodus, Judges, Isaiah, and 1 Kings. Suffice to say, again from Scripture, angels play a key role in the Bible and in the history of our salvation. By tradition, the CCC paragraph 334 tells us that the whole life of the church benefits from the mysterious and powerful help of angels. And that's quoted from the Acts chapter 5, verses 18 to 20. Now we move on to paragraph 336. From its beginning until death, human life is surrounded by their watchful care and intercession. We can see that in Tobit chapter 12, Luke chapter 16, Matthew chapter 18, and Zechariah chapter 1, and the Psalms 34. Beside each believer stands an angel as protector and shepherd leading him to life. That's from St. Basil. Already here on earth, the Christian life shares by faith in the blessed company of angels and men united in God. As always, all references made can be found in the show notes listed on our website. The URL is www.settingapart.com and setting apart is one word. Now, according to St. Thomas Aquinas, and I quote, A guardian angel is assigned to every human creature since his conception in order to avert the dangers coming from demons, who obviously want the death of humans. But angels have a double mediation. In other words, an ascendant and a descendant mediation. On the one hand, they bring and transmit to us the tenderness of God. And on the other hand, they make us go up to God in prayer and intercede for us. Unquote. So, 
Our guardian angels can take many different forms to come to our aid. Regardless of what form they take, they can inspire us with good thoughts and resolutions just as well, with or without a human form. And according to Father Serge Thomas Bonino, angels can act on external circumstances of our lives to protect us in difficult times, to avoid accidents, favor encounters with other people, and so on. And all these actions belong to providence, which is made concrete through them. Angels also pray for us. We see in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, and Revelation 4, verse 8, that the angels continue to sing and pray to God, Holy, Holy, Holy. We also see in Revelation chapter 5, verse 8, and chapter 8, verse 3, and we shall also see in Tobit chapter 12, verse 12, that along with the saints who are in heaven, the angels serve as intercessors for us in prayer to God. Demons, as we know it, are fallen angels. If left to our own, we are clearly no match against them. So to even that out, by grace, God assigns a guardian angel for every one of us. How cool is that? And judging from my near-death experiences, I definitely have my guardian angel to thank for. No doubt about it. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, do check out Season 1, Episodes 4 to Episode 6 to find out more. In Episode 4, Saved by Grace, I reflect on my near-death experiences. In Episode 5, Invitation to Faith, and Episode 6, My Lord and My God, I reflect on the incidents that were instrumental to my conversion. So besides the popular podcast platforms, these episodes are also available on YouTube. The links are available on my website, www.settingapart.com. Now, to summarize, paragraph 350 from the CCC stipulates that, and I quote, angels are spiritual creatures who glorify God without ceasing and who serve his saving plans for other creatures. The angels work together for the benefit of us all." Unquote. The purpose of the angels is to serve God, praise God, worship God, and pray to God. In the process of serving God, they also protect us, pray for us, inspire us, encourage us, and guide us during our journey on earth. Now in Matthew 22 verse 30, Jesus teaches that at the resurrection, we will be like angels in heaven. Now, notice that Jesus doesn't say that we are going to be like chimpanzees, but like angels. So, contrary to Darwin's evolution hypothesis, we are indeed closer to our angelic cousins than monkeys. Something to think about. Indeed, through his soul, the human being is in close contact with the spiritual world of angels. It is a good way to get closer to God. So angels can be a good intermediaries to bring us to God. However, in our moment of weakness, sometimes we may reject God's protection and in turn, our guardian angels. When we reject God, we have to deal with the consequences of our sins when we do not repent. That's why it is important for us to be able to recognize the voice of our angels. And so today, do we know how to discern between our own voice and the voice of our angel? Take the time to reflect and meditate on how receptive both Tobit and Tobiah are to the guidance and suggestion from Raphael in chapter 5 and beyond. With that background, hopefully we now have a better appreciation of the role Raphael the Archangel plays in the book of Tobit. In particular, from Tobit 
5, verse 10, when Raphael said to Tobit, Joyful greetings to you. Tobit answered, What joy is left for me? Here I am, a blind man who cannot see the light of heaven, but must remain in darkness like the dead who no longer see the light. Though alive, I am among the dead. I can hear people's voices, but I do not see them. Now, this exchange between Raphael and Tobit is quite significant. To me, this verse is reminiscent of Jesus starting his public ministry at the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali in Matthew chapter 4 to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah when he says, The people that lived in darkness have seen a great light. On those who lived in a country of shadow, dark as death, a light has dawned. And that is from Matthew chapter 4 verse 16. So the parallel here is quite uncanny. If you juxtapose the prophecy of Isaiah to Tobit's remarks, it's as if Isaiah is prophesying directly to Tobit. And according to St. Bede, when Raphael said, Take courage, God's healing is near. So take courage. This points to Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, when Jesus says, Do penance, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Both the Son of God and the angel are the messengers of the Father's will. Of interest to my reflection on chapter 5 also are the names in verse 13. They all have special meanings. For example, Azariah means Yahweh has helped. Hananiah means Yahweh has shown mercy. Nathan or Nathaniah, Yahweh has given. Shemaliah or Shemaiah, Yahweh has heard. And Tobiah means Yahweh is good. So these are, in addition to the names, Asmodeus and Raphael, which we have uncovered in previous episode. Now, that kind of made me curious about my name. I don't know about you, but as it turns out, it corresponds to the English name John, which is derived from the Hebrew Yohanan, meaning graced by God. Now, if you know my conversion story from season one in episode four to six, which I just highlighted to you earlier, you would agree that the name is quite apt for me. What about you? What about your name? Does it have any biblical significance? You might wish to look it up. To recap in this episode, we have unpacked first that Tobit chapter 5 verse 10 is very profound in revealing God's providence, just as Raphael is proclaiming that Tobit's healing is at hand. Jesus, the angel of the Lord, is proclaiming to the world that the joy of our everlasting salvation is at hand to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah and the promise of God the Father. Second, that the nature and the purpose of angels who are created to glorify God without ceasing to serve His saving plans for other creatures. The angels work together to benefit us all. On the one hand, they bring and transmit to us the tenderness of God. And on the other hand, they make us go up to God in prayer and intercede for us. And indeed, according to St. Basil, beside each believer stands an angel as protector and shepherd leading him to life. Ultimately, we are closer to our angelic cousins than monkeys. At the resurrection, we will be like angels in heaven. Amen. Amen. In closing, let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, thank you for the gift of angels. May I have a better awareness of them, what they are doing, and what they want to do in my life. Angel of God, my God and dear, to whom God's love commits me here, 
ever this day be at my side to light and guard, rule and guide. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening to the Setting Apart podcast. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and get notified so you won't miss any episode. And please feel free to give me your ratings and reviews so that others may get to listen as well. Thank you and God bless.